A lot of people dislike video editing because it can take so much time. I totally get it, but today I wanna to show you five practical tips that will help increase your editing speed and maximize your efficiency. Let's go. All right, because this is a video about speeding up your video editing, let's be speedy and get right into it. One of the most time consuming parts of any edit is actually just taking the time to watch back everything you've filmed. This is when you're deciding what to keep and what to get rid of. For YouTube videos especially, this can take a ton of time but you can instantly reduce this time by watching your videos back at a faster speed. In Final Cut Pro, this is accomplished by using your L and J keys. Simply press L once to play the video like normal, and press L again to play it at a faster speed and again at an even faster speed. You can do the same thing in reverse using the J key. Simply speed it up to the rate where it's as fast as it can be while still understandable, and you'll instantly cut down on your editing time. Another quick tip is to create custom workspaces for different tasks. For example, while I'm culling through all my footage and starting to piece together my edit, I will have what I call my standard workspace, where I can see my browser and all of my effects, and everything is right out there in front of me. But when I go to color grade my footage later on, I need to see my video scopes, and I need to see a larger image of my video so I can really look at all the details. Rather than hiding all of the windows I don't need and then pulling up my scopes and then resizing everything, I've actually created a custom workspace which does all of this at the click of a button. I find myself oftentimes bouncing back and forth between different workspaces and it's a lot faster than manually resizing and showing and hiding every little thing. I'm definitely not saying to play your footage in reverse. That would make this a lot harder to understand and ultimately take more time. What I'm saying is to start at the end of your project and jump backwards wave to wave to each of the times you start your takes. In Final Cut Pro, you can change the view of your timeline so that you can see the audio waveforms and this will signify when you start and end each of your takes. Typically when filming your YouTube videos, your best takes are the last ones. So this is why I'm saying to start at the end and work backwards, just jump wave to wave and you'll keep arriving at your best takes first. How many of you guys know just how time consuming music selection can be? I know for me, music selection used to be one of the longest and most time consuming parts of the editing process. That was until I signed up for today's sponsor, Soundstripe. Soundstripe is an amazing music licensing platform that offers incredible copyright free music that you can legally license on all of your YouTube videos and client projects. I've been using them for years, long before I started my YouTube channel. The reason I'm including them in this video is because of their search features. It makes it so fast and so easy to find the perfect song for your project. If you're interested in checking out Soundstripe, check the link down in the description. If you like what you hear, you can use code CREATIVE20 to save yourself 20% at checkout. One way you can increase your speed but also maximize your efficiency is by using a controller such as this one sent to me by Torbox. Basically what this controller allows me to do is to customize each and every button and dial to do specific tasks. The interface is really easy to use. They even have templates on their site specifically for editors like Final Cut or Premiere or even photo editing tools like Photoshop and Lightroom. You can program every little move of the dial, every button, different combinations of buttons to do different keyboard shortcuts or commands. At first I was a little hesitant about it because I was like, well, can I just do this with my keyboard already? 
In some ways, yes, I can, but the difference is that this is a lot more ergonomical and it makes a lot more sense because I'm not having to strain my hands in weird different formations. I can simply rest my hand on the controller and have all of these different buttons and keyboard commands at my own preference and customization with just the press of a button. Check out this side by side of what my hands are having to do on the keyboard versus the same tasks on the controller. All in all, I really do like the controller. I'm enjoying using it. I do think it speeds up the workflow a bit and it really does put a lot less stress on your hands. All right, everybody, that is going to about wrap up this video. I hope you have enjoyed this and found some value from it. If you wanna check out that MIDI controller or Soundstripe or any of the other gear that I use, I've placed a ton of links down in the description as a resource for you. Before you guys leave, make sure to like this video, subscribe, turn on notifications, and as always, stay creative. Peace.